We are thrilled to be back. It is a new year of high school sports here on Fred TV, and we kick off our live coverage with boys soccer from Diamond Regional. Hello again, everybody. I'm Evan Massoud. Welcome to the broadcast. I hope you had a great summer. This is going to be a fantastic way to kick off the new school year as the Jerfy Hilltoppers are here to square off against their town rivals, their city rivals, the Diamond Bengals. The last time that we did boys soccer here in Fall River, it was this very matchup, and it was back at Durfee, about two miles to the north. Durfee qualified for the state tournament last year. They won more than half of their games. We saw them in Shrewsbury, first time ever out in Shrewsbury, and they came away with a win in that playoff game before getting eliminated. For Diamond last year, kind of a tale of two seasons, really. The Bengals started with eight non-league games to start the year, and they went 0-8. Then they hit the Mayflower Conference. They swept their league going 8-0. So talk about, really, two sides of the equation. Their last game was against Durfee. They lost that game, but due to the power rankings and the new MIAA setup for playoffs, the Bengals also qualified for the tournament despite losing to Durfee. Playing that higher seed gave them more points and got them in. So both teams made it to the tournament last year. Durfee looks very different this year. They graduated 18 seniors in June. So for coach Tiberio Mello, who's back at the helm, it's going to be a bit of a rebuild this year. He said there will be some growing pains along the way. That's to be expected. For Diamond, they have a lot of guys back this year. They were very competitive in the couple games that we covered here on campus last year, and we're looking forward to seeing both, the, both of these teams for the first time here in fall 2022. Great way to start off the year. Looking forward to it, and I hope that you are as well. Stay tuned. Live coverage from Diamond is next. Hi, my name is Laura Ferrara. I am the Director of Traffic and Parking for the City of Fall River. As the school year begins, we want to remind everyone of the school zone safety laws. Crosswalks are here for a reason, your safety. Please use them. Always wait for a crossing guard to stop traffic and escort you safely. Drivers, please use caution when entering a school zone. 20 mile per hour speed limits are strictly enforced as mandated by state law. By being respectful and patient with one another, we can all arrive at our destination on time and in one piece. Thank you for your attention. If you have concerns or questions, please contact my office at 508-324-2123. Let's have a wonderful school year. Welcome back everybody to Diamond Regional. The Hilltoppers on the top left of your screen. The Bengals on the top right. It is great to be back with you for live sports. Great way to start it out. Both teams have not played um, actual games. There have been some scrimmages. Uh, Durfee did have some scrimmages. In fact, when I spoke with Coach Tiberio Mello, about two weeks ago, um, the boys were having a quick kind of warm up and practice, and then they were welcoming Bishop Conley for a scrimmage. So Conley was actually walking across the street uh, for a quick scrimmage at Durfee, and um, Coach said he's he's pleasantly surprised. You know, he was concerned when, when I last talked to him. He was really concerned about numbers, um, but that has not been the case. since we last spoke and that was um, like I said right before school started so coach has numbers now and he's very confident with the team that he's put together and and when I say team it's not just varsity the whole program has numbers freshman has numbers and so does JV in addition to varsity so here we are high atop the roof if we uh, tilt it down the sun is behind us obviously but um, Diamond behind us, players have hit the field. So this is our view, we're up top today, which is great as we uh, bring you the coverage from the rooftop. It's a beautiful evening to start the school year. 40 minute clock here. We have a wind coming in from the northwest, 
69 degrees at game time. Clock is running and here we go. Hilltoppers in their white road jerseys with red shorts. Diamond sporting brand new unis this year. Basically in all orange with some black stripes like, you know, a la the Bengals, right? Um, so they looking pretty good out on the field as well. High kick there from Carlos Dos Santos, almost took out one of the Hilltoppers as Durfee forging back ahead into the box. And that's gonna go out on the sideline. We'll run down the starters for you for both sides. For the visiting Hilltoppers, we have number four, Crispin Sokol, number six, Lenz Bursaquo, number seven, Samuel Cabral Garcia, number nine, Dominic Esteves, Number 10, Landon Medeiros. Number 13, Landon Freitas. Number 15, Andrew Sanft. Number 16, Gilberto Correa. Number 18, Thomas Gonzalez. And number 20, Evan Carvalho in goal for the Hilltoppers. Number 12, Xavier Inacio. And for the Diamond Bengals, they have a freshman in goal, just made that play right there. Number two, Landon Cordero and coach uh, Manny Batello was telling me that he is going with the freshman starter uh, to at least to start the season, see what he has. He's actually very excited. He says it's good to have freshman goalie. He says, you know, you know the, the Bengals, I mentioned, you know, decent number of players back this season, but they did also graduate about 10 players. Uh, so, you know, team does look a little different for them as well. Not as much, um, you know, as for Durfee. But still, double digits in terms of graduates, you know, will make some significant changes for you. Uh, in addition to Cor uh, Cordero, excuse me, in goal, his 10 teammates on the field. Number six, Donovan Gonzaga. Number seven, Sean Cordero. Number eight, Andrew Gesner. Number nine, Tyler Cavallo. Number 10, Sean Borges, as Cordero makes the scoop. Number 11, Aiden Coleman. Number 16, Jaden Desforges. Number 17, Aiden Furtado. Number 21, Carlos Dos Santos. And number 23, Navin Jose. This is one of those games that, you know, we always look forward to um, when these two schools or when Turfey and Conley, although it is rare, we've seen them the last couple of years in a, in a few sports. And, of course, Diamond and Conley um, always – you know, this is a win-win in terms of broadcasts for us because, you know, you got two Fall River teams squaring off. Fall River, you know, when you look at it, it's pretty amazing when you think about how many options that middle schoolers, graduating eighth graders have when it comes to high school. You have Durfee, you have Diamond, you have Bishop Conley, you have Atlantis Charter, uh, which is building up its own athletic program um, down off of Jefferson Street, d deep in the south end. And you have the Argosy School as well. Um, I mean, so little inner city with five high school options, that's <laughs> pretty rare. You don't normally hear of hear about that. Um, and then not to mention, you know, you'll have some kids that will, you know, go to like Stang in Dartmouth. That's not far. Um, I knew quite a few people after eighth grade that went to Stang. I mean, Dartmouth's just, you know, hop, skip and a jump east of here. So uh, lots of options. And, you know, it makes... And that, that goes to what Coach was saying, you know, once school started, Coach Mello, once school started, um, they started getting some late signups for tryouts and stuff, particularly from the freshmen. Um, you know, so kids not wanting to commit right away, not maybe not sure they can handle the load of academics and sports, or maybe just still weren't quite sure exactly what they wanted to do. Um, so... For Coach, like I said, he's very happy that there are numbers. He was concerned. He didn't really say it, but you could tell. And now saying, saying it today, now that he has the numbers, he says, you know, I was a little concerned. And it's true. I mean, you got to feel the team. And Durfee is a, you know, three-level program basically for all the teams, freshman, JV, and um, 
varsity, you know, and that comes with the size of the school. So it's kind of expected in a way. You know, for Diamond, there's a couple games, some of the opponents that Diamond will play for, say, girls volleyball, you know, some of their, their matches, uh, looking at the schedule, start right at 3.30. That's because well, the teams that they're playing don't necessarily have a JV program. Um, I know Diamond has typically a JV program, but they don't have a freshman program. It's just JV and varsity, um, which is why some of their, their matches start earlier than, you know, Durfee will. Set up in front. Whiffed in front, second chance effort from uh, Garcia, couldn't get it to go, and the Hilltoppers still in the box now. It is scooped, but a great opportunity for the Hilltoppers five minutes in. They had the man in front. Now the Bengals coming down the other end. That'll go out of play on the far side. Freitas. Actually did stay in play. That's ended up being a free kick. Thought it went out. Off the head into the box. It's going to drop right around midfield. Handled there by Samft. And now it'll go out of play. He will gather it and throw it in as the Hilltoppers try to move up the field once again. Contact both sides. Now a whistle coming. I think that one's getting called against Medeiros of the Hilltoppers. Number 10. And Borges will kick it away for Diamond. Good booming kick, but it's hooking. It goes out of play. And Samft will throw in. Pass up ahead. Nice feed there to Cavallo. It's cut off. Tough to stay with it, but Gesner did a nice job there. Number one, taking it away, and then two, staying with it as they had, uh, the Hilltoppers had numbers coming in on them. Floater down. One of the joys of uh, opening day, that's a little sarcasm. We're usually the first ones up here on the roof at Diamond after the summer, and a couple uh, Yellow Jackets nests here being <laughs> kind of pestering us. Whistle on the far side, and going down there now is Freitas. He'll kick it away. So Freitas and Samft listed as uh, defenders here. And right out of the shoot, you're seeing that they're kind of patrolling the sides. Um, so you'll look to see them be the guys who will get a lot of the throw-ins, some of the free kicks as they you know, kind of patrol the perimeter. Already 10 minutes gone here on opening night. Inacio kicks it away, going to that far side to Freitas. Has some help. Cuts back. There is a hole there. Nice pass ahead.
I have to say, you know, the the uh, clouds have the clouds rather the sun has set. But uh, you know, when we got here and the field was fully lit, that sent towards the net and it sails. This field looks absolutely fantastic. This, of course, not a an artificial turf. This is grass, and they redid it about five, four or five years ago. Um, and of course, this is when it's pristine, right? Nobody's used it yet. <laughs> but uh, walking on the field, I mean, that that down there, the the grounds crew has done a tremendous job. This field is in great condition to start the year. And actually, so football's on the road to open the season tomorrow. Durfee's home, but Diamond will be on the road. So that's why you don't even see, um, you know, the pocket. You don't see the hash marks. None of that is there yet. Um, they haven't painted them yet because uh, so soccer has been the only team playing. So um, that's that's to come, certainly. But um, for now, you're looking at really like a true soccer setup, except for the white lines that are, you know, separating five yards at a time. Another whistle will be a free kick for the Bengals. Bengals take a shot on net. That is through the uprights. Won't get you anything for uh, soccer. That one really took off, too. We really saw some, uh, you know, looking back at last year, we really saw some great moments across the board. Um, you know, some milestones, some really big wins. It was really a fun year, and, uh, you know, there was the, the, the positivity, I, I think you could say, was there too, you know, with reopening, going into the new, you know, for Durfee particularly, you know, going back to the, Coming into the new building and uh, you know trying to have a normal full year. I know that you know the games we did here as well. Uh, you know there was a good vibe. Fans were you know allowed for all the sports and, and whatnot. So you know and then the, this year you know really having a a normal reopening, first time in two years. Every coach I've talked to has just said the vibe has been fantastic. And, you know, that's what you want. People, you know, kids excited to come out and play and participate, you know, and represent their school. That's down the field. Holding back a little bit there was Carvalho. Had to be careful not to get caught off sides. And diving for the ball is Cordero, who lost it for a moment. And ended up being a foot race between the junior Midfielder Cavallo and the freshman goalie of the Bengals, Cordero. Fed on ahead, but very offside. <laughs> very offside. That one coming back. That'll halt play. One thing I will say, I'm, I'm very, you know, just after only 15 minutes here, I'm very impressed by um, the Hilltoppers' ball control and ball movement. They're passing defeat. Of course, now a chance for Diamond. Loose ball cleared out by Sokol. Backing up Inacio in goal. But the Hilltoppers really have done a very good job passing defeat. You know, they're finding open men. They're not just passing it into the open field. They're they're passing with purpose. And that's not something that 
you know you see a lot of in the first 15 minutes of the season that sort of chemistry knowing where guys are going and kind of reading your teammates what they're kind of predicting almost what they're going to do that comes with time and and then you know you factor in again how many players graduated from this Durfee team uh, that that stuff takes time to develop but I'm really impressed so far and it's again just a small sampling here but Durfee's done a nice job at you know moving the ball up the field when they need to and getting kind of getting by that time in defense they're passing to feet very well that's something that I know coach always coach Mello always talks about that um, you know and that's probably why I try to watch for it it's not just you know sends right down look at that beautiful pass cleared out nice defensive play there going into the slide check from the back and that'll draw our whistle you know Derby had some heartbreaking losses last year um, you know every game has a lot of opportunities obviously but there were a couple there were a couple calls I remember last year that really had a direct impact on the outcome and you know that's hard it's hard pill to swallow but it's you know it's part of the game and you know the officials obviously they're they're out here trying to manage a game. There's only two of them on the field, which I think is not enough to begin with, but there's a shortage of officials. That's another thing. So, you know, it's always easy to, to blame the refs, and, you know, we get on them sometimes too, but ultimately, you know, it's not easy, obviously, when you're the one that's patrolling the games and managing the games, and on a, on a field like soccer, the largest playing surface you're going to see all year, to only have two, to me, that's not enough eyes on the field. Um, but you have a shortage, and that's you know that's something coming into this season that you know we really saw to be true, and now we're seeing direct result of it. Um, football teams are being asked to play one Saturday game this season because there are not enough refs to spread out across the state for Friday Night Lights. Um, so that's a problem, you know, um, and I think. You know, that's something that, you know, you look at why. Well, think about it. You're out there in a thankless job, essentially, as an official. And who wants to deal with constant jarring and criticism? So, you know, it's it's, it's a tough situation. Um, I know a few people who are refs, and uh, it, it's, it's a lot sometimes to take. You know, we have the cheap seats. We're watching everything from up here, um, or the and their fans from the stands, and, We have a better view than they do a lot of times because we're, you know, we can see the scope of the whole field. And sometimes, you know, you get rough calls. But the bottom line is, you know, we need officials and, uh, you know, I, the sportsmanship aspect of it from players and from spectators, you know, is, is is an important thing. And that's, I think, maybe a good reminder as we start the new year for all for everybody um, is that, you know, the officials on the field they're they're not perfect either. I'm certainly not. Um, but yeah, it's it, you know that's a result. I think a lot of it um, to not have enough officials is a problem. And actually, we're seeing too, like field hockey is playing um, well, their first conference game at Durfee. Field hockey's playing a Saturday game uh, this month. They're playing New Bedford on a Saturday afternoon. Girls soccer, same thing. And I think actually, I think boys soccer too. I don't know if I don't think they're playing a conference game, but I believe boys soccer has a Saturday game as well on the schedule. So. You know, that we're, we're seeing that, and you're looking at now some six-day weeks. A chance for the Bengals and the Hilltoppers defense helping out Inacio once again. That's Sokol, second time Sokol has basically taken a goal off the board. It'll be a throw-in for the Bengals on the side. Well, Diamonds had two good chances. Front of the box, diving save, that's gonna go, no! Second chance saved by Inacio. My gosh, I don't know how he got to that second shot because he was on the ground. What a save. And 
back to midfield we go. The Bengals there made a little bit of noise with that quick time span. Collision along the side, that'll draw a throw in. It'll be a free kick. Borges once again. Senior defender. And our official making sure that Carvalho is the proper 10 paces away from the ball. High booming kick. And that goes out on the goal line off of one of the Bengals. So Durfee will have the goal kick. And it looks like Samft is going to kick it out. As we've passed the halfway mark already here in the first half. 18 and a half minutes to play here before the break. Strong kick there from the ground. That one landing past midfield. That's up ahead, a chance now for Durfee. The Bengals turn it around. Oh, the Hilltoppers coming back, Samft with it. Traffic behind him and in front, lofting it toward the box. That's gonna sail over the head of uh, Good crowd on hand. Um, everybody kind of on one side, which is kind of strange. There's a ton of the uh, gr girls soccer team from Durfee is here. See some of the coaches as well. Diamond football players are here. So nice opening night crowd, but like I said, kind of strange that they're not spread out. You know, one school on one side, one on the other. Everybody's piled in one, <laughs> one little section of the bleachers. Nice move through the defense. Madeiras passing ahead there to uh, Bersico, and that is sent toward the box. He goes tumbling down, but it's scooped by Cordero. No foul there. And he'll send it. Good, strong kick. Offsides on Carvalho. Cheated forward just a little bit. And that sends it the other way. Steves, middle of the field. Sent back by Gonzaga. Another whistle. Hilltoppers coming out of their box far side. Back towards midfield, nice move on the far side. Hilltoppers with a three on two. Ball is tipped and deflected. It slows up the forward progression a little bit. Now Carvalho with it, help to his right. Samft calling for it, will get it. Towards the net. Looking for a call, not getting it as he goes down. The ball goes into the hands of Cordero. Oh, that one's coming well out of play. 
Hits the embankment. Borges. Now Gonzaga coming across here to Gesner, right along the boundary. Good feet up ahead. Whistle sounding, it looks like the Hilltoppers are going to get themselves a free kick. Pretty good field position as well, right around the 30-yard uh, line of, uh, if you're looking at the football markers. So not bad. That's, uh, you know, almost halfway to the goal from midfield. That's Landon Medeiros, number 10. Getting ready to kick it away. Line drive toward the box. Cavallo, it goes past him as well as Estevs, and it goes out of play. Good spot, because actually if they were able to get to it, there were no Bengals near them, so you would have had two Hilltoppers work in the corner the post, if you will, there, so. But just a little too strong, that ball. Carvalho. Notice how he kind of took it a little easy there. That's, that's, what, that's what a couple offsides calls will do for you. <laughs> you, kinda, you won't go full steam ahead. You play it a little bit cautiously and Stamped with a quick throw in. It's kicked. Out of play by the Bengals, and we'll do it again. Same spot. Stamped going back this time to Correa. Looking for some open field, sending it down toward the box, and it's stopped in the air by Borges. And getting tangled up. That's going to draw a whistle from behind as uh, Madeiras got tangled up there with Jose. And a free kick coming for the Bengals at midfield. That's onside, Carvalho has some help, but he's way deep in the corner now, looking for a header, and it sails wide left of the goal back towards the edge of the box, and now ultimately coming back. Sam trying to get through, being held. Little extra there from Sean Cordero. The foul goes against Saft, and it'll be a free kick for Diamond. And the official saying something, though, to Cordero as well, probably telling him to just chill out. Keep it cool, keep the tempers down. Good deep kick there from Borges toward the box. Hilltoppers have to clear it out. They do. Coming in for it's Gesner. And it's quickly turned around. Passed up ahead now to uh, Bursiquo. He goes down. He's not happy. Punched the ground. My goodness.
Shot taken wide left. Remember, there was no smoking on the premises here at Diamond Regional. Under 10 minutes to play here in the first half. Scoreless game on opening night. Oh, that's, come on. Well, the Bengals gonna get a free kick here at midfield. On the ground, in the box. Inacio there. Got nearly a full moon coming up on the horizon. Huge. We really get some cool shots from up here. Some good views. This is a much higher spot than you think it is. I have to tell you, I know Craig, uh, who's running camera, and Michael, one of our students, um, Neither of them had done a game here. And um, I think they'll agree when we get back to Durfee that the height we have here is a little better. Um, Durfee's about, we're about half as high at Durfee and it's, it's difficult to see the far sidelines um, calling a game there. And then particularly, you know, for me, I'm usually in the booth at Durfee, so I'm even lower. Um, this from a vantage point is like as good as you can get. Um, and then you're higher than the tree line, so you can actually see the Watapa. And then, of course, the moon, when you have a full moon, I mean, it, it's really a nice shot here. Zanft sending it. Header from, uh, that looked like Borges again. And now back to Samft along the sidelines. He'll send it to the box and right into the hands of Cordero. Coming down the other way and it'll go out of play. Carvalho chasing it down, has it in the corner, looking for some help. That's Correa, header, oh, it's off the crossbar! Second chance coming possibly for Durfee, can he take another shot? Well, they set that up beautifully. Maybe an inch lower and that'll, that falls in. <laughs> instead of bouncing straight back. That goes out of play. So if we get ready for the throw in, I gotta take it over the camera for a minute. I have to show you all this. Because of course this is, you know, being a telephoto. Beautiful shots here. Of the moon. That's wild. That ball, we come back to play. 
is going out on the far sideline. It's been played. As the Hilltopper is forging back ahead. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> I couldn't resist. I don't get to run camera for games anymore. You know, I'm the one talking. So, but uh, this camera has pretty good throw for a 20 times lens. That, that's not bad. Final five minutes here of the first half. Still looking for that first goal. Both sides have had a couple good opportunities. That more, most recently being Durfee there on that header that really, I mean, you're talking a game of inches there, the difference of it bouncing straight back or deflecting down and into the goal over Cordero. So uh, kind of a lucky break in that sense. A great time to take a shot, and Cordero has to go down, kind of leaning to his right, falling on it. High booming kick, landing right in the circle. That's gonna go out of play before Cavallo can get there. You know, thinking about these night games, we, um, you know, during the summer, Hope you folks enjoyed the uh, Fred TV Sports Report and uh, some of our action, you know, of Titans football, of the Fall River Independent Baseball League. We did all those games, and we just now, September S September 7th, yesterday, got notice from uh, the city of Fall River that West Nile was found in mosquitoes here in the city. No human cases. They just, you know, testing in the ponds, and I guess – they came out and found that there was the virus. So uh, interesting. To, it'll be interesting to see if any of the night games get, um, you know, moved around. Uh, this, of course, being a night game to start the year. Um, I can remember when we had a few years back, um, I want to say maybe 2015 or 2016, we had, uh, we had football on Saturday afternoons. Or we had, I think they were, they were doing like 4 o'clock games on Fridays because they couldn't be under the lights. had to be done before dusk, which was really strange. And, and one of the rarest situations, you wouldn't expect Columbus Day to be, you know, super warm. We had, you know, mid-80s and about 100% humidity. It was awful. <laughs> it was terrible. Everybody was, you know, the, the players were dying on the field. Um, and it was full sun, all because of the... You know, the pesky mosquitoes. Um, I have not heard any announcements that any games have been you know, changed. But, of course, if it comes to that, um, you, know, you folks will be the first to know. The best way to know that is to like and follow us on Facebook here where we live stream all of our games. So click that like button so you don't miss any notifications or any posts on schedule changes or when we go live, like tonight, for our broadcasts. We come up on about a minute. They stop the clock in the stadium at two minutes. Our clock is still rolling. So according to this, in terms of regulation, if there's any stoppage time, we really didn't stop at all. So this should be pretty, pretty right on here. So we're looking at basically a minute left here in this first half. As the Bengals and Hilltoppers squaring off here on opening day and right now in a scoreless draw. We'll send it back to Anasio. Well, 40 minutes, real time has come and gone. And very little extra 
here expected. Our officials keeping watch of the of the time. And there you go. About maybe, maybe at most 15 seconds of extra time there, and that's it. As we go into the half, a nothing, nothing game here. 10 minute halftime. As the Durfee Hilltoppers and Diamond Bengals will go to the bench for the 10 minute halftime break. We will take the break as well. Uh, a couple pieces we'll share with you here during halftime. Uh, some changes to the Durfee traffic and parking uh, that was sent out to all of the parents and students. In addition, we also have uh, back to school video Happy from birthday, opening day. I'm gonna share that with you as well. And we will have more live soccer right after the break. Stay with us, opening night, halfway through. Hi, I'm Matt Damaris, principal of BMC Durfee High School. We put together this video to show all the changes that are going on to the exterior of our building in terms of traffic. We know that traffic was a big issue last year because we only had one way in and one way out to our campus, Ellsbury Street. The goal of these changes is to take as much pressure off Ellsbury Street as possible. When you come back to school, the first change you'll notice is as you turn off of President Avenue to Ellsbury Street, there will be two turning lanes in either direction onto Ellsbury. The city will be striping Ellsbury Street to have one lane traveling north straight through to BCC, and the left lane will be the turning lane onto Durfee's campus. A change that you will notice is that we have reversed the traffic pattern in the parking lot immediately adjacent to our field house. So what that means is you can enter the campus taking a left near the Driscoll skating rink across from Dunkin Donuts onto the campus and you can drop your student off and then exit near the front of the school. Our traffic pattern in the north parking lot will remain the same. The new additions come by way of our connectivity now to the former West Main parking lot and to Wiedemo Street. We're hoping that many, many families take advantage of this access point by entering the West Main lot via Ray Street, coming down the hill where you can drop your student off near the field house and then exiting the campus by way of Wiedemo Street. Please refrain from parking on our neighbor's driveways, walkways, in the plaza nearby. I want to encourage all families to be aware that our building is open at 7 a.m. every day. We have breakfast waiting for students. So if you're able to, consider dropping your student off before 7.30 where there will be relatively no traffic at all. If you're trying to arrive exactly on time, classes start at 7.55 a.m you will certainly experience some traffic and some congestion and your student will be late to class. So, I know that this is gonna be a period of adjustment. There'll be some confusion. And as we settle into the new year, I know that getting to and from Durfee High School will be a lot easier than it was last year. As adults, we need to model the behavior. Uh, we need to take care of one another, um, and in turn, uh, we will take care of our scholars. Uh, I, I'm a firm believer that if we take care of our adults, our adults take care of our students. Um, we all have a piece uh, in that puzzle. Kids will learn when they know that you care about them and that you're gonna support them. Well, every adult has a role to play, whether it's volunteering, uh, working in the schools, working at a, a program, that they all can provide some sort of support. Really the message we wanna uh, stress with the students that every day matters, that they matter, and we're here to support them in any way that we can.
We're just trying to make this fun for the kids, uh, you know, trying to amp them up a little bit, get them back into school, because everybody's a little bit nervous always on the first day, you know, they don't know what to expect, so we're trying to ease them into it a little bit. It takes a village and not everybody has the same benefits as everybody else so we like to make sure that kids all know that they're equal and that they all have the same chances in this world. The safety of the school, the safety of the district rests with all of us. Every single person needs to do their part. Um, we ask parents to make sure they're checking their kids' bags, that they're talking to kids about safety and what they can do to contribute to a safe culture. Um, but it really, this is not a one-sided issue. This belongs to every single person. Fall River Public Schools has opportunities for positions in multiple areas for people looking to work with the next generation. Come grow with our team. We have openings for teachers, paraprofessionals and teaching assistants, and other educational support positions available. We are also looking to fill operations support positions such as custodial, security, and food service. We offer competitive salary and benefit plans. We have rewarding work available in our 21st century schools and learning environments. Come grow with us. Please contact the Human Resources Department at 508-675-8420, extension 53708, or see our postings on our website at fallriverschools.org. Welcome to the Florida Fire Department. Mass General Law, Chapter 148, Section 12, uh, specifically prohibits the, the private use of fireworks within the, within the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Um, one of the issues that we have um, is we're so close to other states, Rhode Island, we border Rhode Island, we border um, New Hampshire, and fireworks are legal in those states. So what happens now is we have, on a regular basis, people transporting fireworks back and forth. And there's a fine from $100 to $1,000 and can be up to a year in jail as well. It's dangerous. Uh, we've had fireworks that have been used by public display that actually have caused house fires. I know one in particular, it was around um, Kennedy Park area where a bottle rocket was shot off and it landed inside a roof window that was open for ventilation. And it caused a fire inside the building. Uh, I know that um, every year, the Fort Worth Fire Department, EMS Division, and the Fire Service responds to multiple calls because of errant explosions. And um, I can tell you, from being a veteran, I know that some of my brothers in arms, you know, somebody that has PTSD, it, it can bother them. So again, it's, um, it's, it's something that's illegal, and um, it's something that's dangerous, and it's something that can be a, a, a bother to other people. So again, in, in Massachusetts, we ask the citizens, and specifically Fall River, not to use illegal fireworks. Hi, my name is Laura Ferreira. I am the Director of Traffic and Parking for the City of Fall River. As the school year begins, we want to remind everyone of the school zone safety laws. Crosswalks are here for a reason, your safety please use them. Always wait for a crossing guard to stop traffic and escort you safely. Drivers, please use caution when entering a school zone. 20 mile per hour speed limits are strictly enforced as mandated by state law. By being respectful and patient with one another, we can all arrive at our destination on time and in one piece. Thank you for your attention. If you have concerns or questions, please contact my office at 508-324-2123. Let's have a wonderful school year. Welcome back to Diamond Regional, everybody. It is 
Time for the second half. Bengals and Hilltoppers have taken the field. Nightfall here at the Harrington Athletic Complex. A scoreless game through one half on opening night. And so here we go. Switching sides, of course, at the half. Hilltoppers deep in the box, now sent deep into the night. That one going all the way to the fence. Good chance for the Hilltoppers in the opening minute here of the second half. Evan Massoud with you. Great to be back for a new year. Seems like it has been a good... Uh, Opening week in a couple days. Positive vibes in the city here. That's always good. I mentioned this on my uh, last sports report in uh, which aired last Friday um, that it's really hard to believe as that's taken. What a save from Cordero. It's coming back though. There was an infraction and it's coming back, it appears. Um, no, what I was going to say, and if you tuned in, it's kind of hard to believe, but this is actually my 10th opening day. I don't know where the time has gone. I started uh, in May 2012, so spring sports were kind of just, you know, getting to the second half. But in terms of full year, this is my 10th opening day doing sports here. So it's uh, pretty cool, actually. You know, we've se I've seen a lot in 10 years and uh, seen some really good moments. It's our state championship. Uh, we've seen numerous milestones, and it's been a lot of fun. So, uh, you know, thank you to the viewers, you guys, for everybody for always watching our coverage. And, uh, you know, big thanks to also all the students that have come through that I've gotten to supervise and instruct in the field and the professionals that some of them, the, some of the alums that have come back and worked, had the pleasure to work beside. And so we got a good crew. You know, I look back at some of the old stuff as that's taken, oh, what a save! Ignacio, leaning the right way. <laughs> Tremendous save. Um, you know, what I was gonna say though is, you know, looking back at some of the stuff from, you know, 2012, 2013, and uh, you know, at that time, we, we weren't filming in HD. We didn't have a scoreboard, we didn't have yeah, we had very little. It was, you know, we were still building it all up. And uh, I think we've done quite a bit in the right direction in 10 years. And uh, now our sports coverage has kind of become its own sub-brand, if you will, of Fred TV, its own little department in a way. Um, it's got its own look and kind of its own crew and the whole bit. So, um, you know, I'm very grateful because I stand here and talk. We were just like getting the shot of the moon, right? I said... I don't get to film anymore. It's because I have to be here and talk and uh, and broadcast and call the game, which is equally as fun, um, but I can't do both. So I can't call the game if I don't have crew to work with me. So um, it's certainly a team effort. And, uh, you know, we, we always try to put the best product that we can out there, and uh, th that's something we'll always continue to do. We'll always try to make it a little better. The live streaming really changed the game, honestly. You know, so many bad things came along with COVID and the pandemic. But I will say one thing that, you know, was good for us is it, you know, it helped us get a little bit more uh, with the times, I guess you could say, in terms of the tech and how we push things out. Um, we live stream now more than we ever did, not just for sports, but across the board. Uh, but sports in particular, to be able to bring you the live coverage as it's happening, um, has been really great. It's been a game changer for sure. And um, so you're seeing it as it happens. And our software here, you know, we can.
push everything out, the graphics and everything. There's no editing after the fact. I mean, that's that's what it should be, and that's you know we're happy that we can do it. We're happy we have the means to be able to do it. So anyway, I digress. Um, again, thanks to the viewers. We appreciate you all watching and the support that we get. And uh, you know, here's to another 10 years, hopefully, right? So. Far side, Sanft will have a free kick just inside the yellow boundary lines. And of course, he's going to send it, so nobody near him. There's no 10 foot needs. Wow, look at that. See, make a liar out of me. I said I'm not always right. Make a liar, liar out of me right away. Looked like he was going to send it. He didn't. He went right back to Inacio. That was kind of interesting. I'm not sure what the thought process was there because Inacio didn't send it down the field either. That is sent. Oh, it's to the right of the post. It tailed away from Anasio. I don't think he got a hand on it. I didn't see any deflection, so it should be Durfee ball. It is. And a good strong kick. That's going to go past midfield. Hilltoppers looking for a call. They don't get one, or do they? Now a late whistle. Looks like Borges talking with our official. Yeah, he's not happy, but Dur Durfee does get the call. I never heard the whistle, I'll be honest with you. So either it was late or it was when the crowd was cheering. So that's number 18, Thomas Gonzalez. The Bengals will try to, you know, build up that barricade of players. They'll have to be 10 feet back, which is, you know, I was going to say just about there. This is always a good spot for a free kick because you're, you know, halfway to the goal. You're about the 25-yard line. Line drive, going to the corner. It's going to hook past the goal. No good. But I like this, the spot, trying to hook it into that top left pocket there. Always a very tough spot for a goalie to defend and and keep. goes out of play. So from one end to the other, now Durfee will throw in. Bengals kind of swarming the box here. That's lofted ahead, a chance coming in for it as Inacio makes contact in the process of trying to scoop it in the air and he does hold on to it. Now the Hilltoppers pushing ahead. That's going to go out.
Ten minutes gone here in the second half. Of course, as a refresher here, uh, there's no, no overtime in the regular season, so. If it stays nothing, nothing, it ends nothing, nothing. Only in the playoffs do we see overtime and uh, potentially penalty kicks. So during the regular season, a tie is a tie. And um, and that's it. I mean, it's kind of like the, you know, kind of like uh, hockey's the same way as well um, and field hockey. So it'll end in a tie if that's what happens at the end of regulation. Towards the Durfee bench, trying to keep it in is Bursaquo. And he does, with the Bengals now sending it up the field. Down into the corner, played onside. It's Carlos Dos Santos. It's out of play. We're going to see our first corner of the game. Can you believe that? We've seen over 50 minutes of game time. We haven't seen a corner kick yet. First one coming here. And it is Dos Santos. Who, oh, Dos Santos is placing it. He will not kick it. I believe that's Gesner, number eight. Gesner, a lefty kicker. Sending it past the goal. It's still in the box. Nobody really broke towards it, though. That was kind of strange, kind of slow to develop. And that'll draw a whistle. The ball never really hooked in either on that corner. Usually... You try to have it hooked towards the goal, and it kind of just went straight. There was really no curve to it in any way, left or right. Topper's moving the ball well here in the perimeter. That's sent towards the goal, and it's going to go over. Sailing long. Whistle sounding from the back side. Oh, here you go. Here's our scheduled flyover a little late. Look at the geese. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> they were all over the softball field for the longest time. They flew in pregame. I've never, I've never seen anything like that. That's crazy. And that wasn't just like one small group. That was a couple of flocks. Oh, 
a header out of play. Borges diving. That'll go out of play as well. Now Diamond will throw in. It's a foot race to the ball. That'll go out of play. No, does it stand? Thought it went out. It did. Be throw in for Samft and the Hilltoppers. Short throw in to the corner. That's going to go out on the goal line. It should be Bengals ball. I think the Hilltoppers thought it was going to be a corner kick, but it certainly looked like Durfee was the last to touch it. Borges down in the corner, turns it around right up the field. It does go out of play, but it gets it kind of dug out of the hole, if you will, back towards midfield. Borges sending it. Now down the field, that is offsides. Versaquo getting the bad news. Pretty easy call. Our officials have been watching that all night very closely and they've been right on with it. Part of why the whistles are a little hard to hear too is the officials are still using the handheld COVID whistles and they're battery operated and they're not nearly as loud as a whistle that you blow that isn't electronic. They just kind of sound like they got a silencer on them or something. You know what I mean? Like they're kind of muffed in a way. Um, So it's kind of hard to hear, especially, you know, for me, you're know, wearing the headset. As that is cleared and out of play. Bengals wanted a penalty out of that. There was a lot of contact in the box. 
Now it's gonna be a corner kick, but I think Durfee, lucky they're not dealing with a penalty kick here halfway through the second half. Low line drive, whistle sounds as the kick is going off. The official behind the net, moving some of the Bengals out of the inner box there. Header out of play. And that's off of one of the Hilltoppers, so we'll do it again. Another corner kick. Player down in the box when the Bengals went down. Hilltoppers able to clear it out and then some a little push from behind as Bursaquo goes, <laughs> wow, pirouetting over Borges, comes back to still get the ball at Furtado on his heels as well. He's going the length of the field. Very fast player, line drive to the box as he goes down after the kick. What a surge. That earns him some applause from his teammates. And in fact, Durfee's first corner kick of the game as a result. So now from the far side, the Hilltoppers will send it in from the corner. Whistle sounds before the, before the ball gets there, an infraction in the box. And a goal kick coming, that'll negate, and put a halt to it, it'll negate anything that would have happened. Bouncing ball, falling on it is Inacio. Quickly getting rid of it, no kick, kind of bowling it out. Right across, oh, he lost control of it. Holy cow, that almost went back. Woo! Borges trying to clear it. His teammate was right there, ping-ponged right off of his head, went out of play. Went out on the goal line too, so it gives Durfee a corner kick when it should have just cleared right out. Oh, kind of a crazy sequence of events right there. So from the near side now, a corner kick for the Hilltoppers. That's going kind of towards the back of the box. Not a good spot. And the Bengals clear it out for the moment. <laughs> Handball called. The bench called it before the official. So free kick now for Durfee. Right into the hands of Cordero. Bengals with some numbers here. Now it goes to the far side, can they turn it around? Another collision. Bengals coaching staff kind of gesturing like, where, where's the whistle? What's the call? That's twice. Pretty good contact in the box and no whistles called in favor of the home team.
Waiting on the throw in here in front of Diamond's bench as the Hilltoppers put it back in play. That'll go out on the side. Nice job. That looked like Medeiros uh, who stopped it. And it was now towards the goal line, sending it back. Shot taken and it's out of play. It'll be a goal kick for the Bengals. Well, this uh, opening the broadcast year here on a Thursday night. Tomorrow, week one of the high school football season. Again, Diamond will be traveling uh, this week, but Durfee is home, and the Hilltoppers will host to Attleboro for opening night. Uh, they went to Attleboro last year for opening night, and this year they will host the Blue Bombardiers at seven o'clock at Mac Aldridge Field. We will be live from Durfee tomorrow night, beginning at uh, about five minutes to the hour, five minutes before kickoff. Um, uh, BJ McDonald slated to join me in the booth, did a couple games with me last year and years previously, uh, former player, former coach. So uh, looking forward to that. It's the Hilltoppers trying, oh, pulls back, open shot, and it's good! Reset! And the Hilltoppers have their first goal and lead of 2022. One to nothing, Durfee. That was a beautiful set. Saw there was traffic, waited and pulled it back, and basically got himself a free kick. So far, the goal, number 18, Thomas Gonzalves. Yeah, Thomas Gonzalves with the goal and the Hilltoppers. Ahead 1-0 with 12 minutes to go. That one down the field, quickly sent down. Inacio keeping it in. Uh, so then tomorrow being Friday, so that's football. And then Saturday, we'll be back at Durfee, more live football, the final game of the season for the Troy City Titans. We covered them this summer as part of the East Coast Football League. And uh, last week, they traveled for an away game to face the Southern New England Admirals, uh, who have been nationally recognized in this league. They're 9-0 in the in the uh, in the league this summer. Um, and now they're coming back. They're coming to Durfee, so it's kind of a home and home. Coming to Durfee um, for a road game against the Titans uh, on Saturday night. So uh, gonna be a tough one. In brief conversation with uh, head coach Comer, he said that there's so many, you know, every time they get somebody back, they lose three people. Uh, the injury bug has just absolutely plagued the team this year and he said it's it's going to be hard to really fill both sides of the ball on uh, he's going to have a lot of guys playing two ways so uh, going to be a tough way to end it you know Titans don't have a win in 2022 and definitely going to be a challenge on Saturday for them to try to grab one in their final game um, but it has been a fun summer being able to cover their league um, in their team and uh, you know hopefully next summer uh, we will be able to bring you live football again and uh, you know we'll see the Titans for a second season but uh, for this year at least we're wrapping it up on Saturday so back to back to back um, live coverage here on Fred TV boys soccer tonight high school football tomorrow and semi pro on Saturday and then just a quick look into next week we're um, kind of we're light until the end of the week. Yeah, we have soccer and football um, on schedule. Nothing earlier in the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So it would be Thursday, Friday, next week, 15th and 16th. That's what we're looking at. So Hilltoppers with a free kick from the far side. We're into the final 10 minutes here at Diamond Regional. Right into the hands there of Cordero, who really has had a nice night. Both goalies actually... 
uh, having a nice night. I mean, Cordero's a freshman, so he's a new starter. And Inacio, um, you know, starting for the Hilltoppers, replacing Chris Panchley, who's been in, who, he was a starting goalie last year. Um, and before that, you had Zach Massa for a couple years. So Inacio hasn't gotten a lot of time in net for the Hilltoppers. Um, Inacio is just a sophomore. So, you know, kind of like Coach Patello going with the freshman, Coach Mello, you know, he's got the sophomore starting. So hopefully these two boys, you know, will have themselves good varsity careers and kind of be, you know, the keepers for the next three, four years for both sides. Um, so both both teams, though, you know, kind of dealing with that change, the changing of the guard, um, you know, in net. So, and they've both really played a good game tonight. They've had some good saves. Another chance for Durfee. Can they make it 2 nothing? Loose ball. They're blowing the whistle, and they're calling a penalty in the box. Durfee's going to have a penalty kick here. That is number 10 for the Hilltoppers. That's Landon Medeiros. He'll try to make it 2-0 and pretty much all but seal it. And he will. Buried into the corner. And it's 2-0, Jerfy. Penalty kick conversion by number 10, Landon Medeiros. You know, looking at that play, it w I don't think it was so much the contact. I think the defender, after um, Cordero came out, the defender grabbed the ball and was hold, like essentially a handball in the box. It wasn't, I don't think it was so much that it was like a physicality foul. I think it was because he touched the ball. Time out on the pitch. And a timeout now with seven minutes and eight seconds to go. Well, a good showing, you know, from both sides, I would say, tonight. I mean, you know, the penalty kick's one thing, obviously. I, I look at this as, right now, a one nothing game. Um, and that goal to make it one nothing was outstanding um, from Gonzalez. But both sides, really, I mean, you know, good passing tonight, good, good defense, good ball movement, some good opportunities on offense. Um... You know, Diamond, unfortunately, unable to cash in, at least till this point. There's still seven minutes to play. Um, but both sides have created opportunities for themselves. And, uh, you know, both sides have done a pretty good job at, uh, you know, being very competitive on the field. I like what I'm seeing here, you know, from, from game one of the year. And I think both teams here, both teams are young. You know, there's freshmen on both teams here. Uh, let's see, excuse me. No, no freshmen for Durfee. I misread one of the years of graduation here. But a uh, couple freshmen, two in fact, uh, yeah, including goalie Cordero um, on the Bengals varsity roster. And they're starters tonight, both of them. So Cordero in goal. The other was Tyler Cavallo, number nine. But, you know, Coach Mello and his Hilltoppers, he's got a number of sophomores and um on this team, juniors on this team, and then a decent mix of seniors. You know, there'll be a lot of graduates this year too for the soccer program at Durfee. Um, but after one game here, I like what I've seen from both sides. As they both come back onto the field for the final 7.08. Now, folks, of course, remember we can't cover every single sport, every single level, every single game. Um, at Durfee, uh, we have athletic director Brad Boston has uh, purchased and installed a few robotic cameras. And one of them, um, you know, they had last year, so they were already using it a year ago in the gym. And um, now there's one outside for Mac Aldridge Field in the main stadium. 
Uh, so, you know, freshman games, JV games, and then some of the varsity games that we can't be at, um, they will be live streamed by the athletic department on YouTube, the YouTube channel being Durfee Athletics. Um, so, you know, if we're not there, there's still the opportunity to watch most games. Um, so just kind of a heads up there. So in, in expanding from, you know, what is in the field house for a robotic camera, um, now hanging on the press box uh, on the main stadium at Durfee at Mac Aldridge Field, there's also um, a huddle cam there as well. So, um, and YouTube, you know, to be able to watch it, you don't have to have, you don't have to pay for anything, you know, nothing like that. It's, it's free. It's not like some of the other um, groups out there that you have to, you know, subscribe. And it, you know, one of, one of them, honestly, being the High School Sports Network, which um, I know Diamond has used for some time. I think Somerset uses them. Uh, but you have to have a subscription. Your fans have to sign up and pay to watch. Um, streaming out on YouTube, you don't have to pay. And same with us here on Facebook, you don't have to pay. So uh, we're not doing that. Um, so, yep, so just so you know, there's that's a couple other ways to see some of the games um, when we're not broadcasting live. Two Hilltoppers down on that sequence of plays. Looks like one of them cramping up there. It has gotten pretty cool. <laughs> um, and, you know, first game, first live action, really full game action. This this is going to happen. Uh, Clock still rolling, of course, so when we get down to zero, we'll have a little extra time between some of the goals and this stoppage here and whatnot. So probably looking about, I'd say, two minutes of extra time once our once our uh, countdown runs out. Oh, that's going to draw a whistle. Are they giving out a card? Wow. I didn't think that was that egregious. I mean, I know he's sliding into him, but I don't know. I've seen, I've seen worse than that not be given a card. I'm a little surprised by that. Not to mention, let's think time and place here. It's opening night, you're down to nothing, and there's four minutes to go. <laughs> I, I'm a little surprised by that. Well, the Hilltoppers will get the free kick. Nonetheless. Whistle sounds, ball on its way. Header out of the box. I think that actually was off of Cordero. I think he's the one who headed it out, the goalie. That ball hung up there a long time. In front, and it's good! 3 nothing. Landon Medeiros with his second. Had the penalty kick, and now a true goal in the middle of play. 10, Landon Medeiros with the goal. Set up beautifully. And that seals it. Stranger things have happened, but that ought to ice it right there for Durfee. That'll go out of play. It'll be a throw in for the Bengals. Out of bounds.
Good fan section tonight. <laughs> Durfee girls soccer. Durfee girls soccer jarring at the uh, diamond football player. It's got to love it. That's funny. No, good atmosphere. Everybody behaving, which is great. I mean, you know, the thing is, is with, with a school like this, is you have, obviously, everybody knows each other. You know, it's not like team coming in from Boston. You know, you, you have two Fall River schools here. The players, the kids, the fans, pretty much all know each other. So, you know, everybody wants to win, but it, it's a little different situation here than if, say, like New Bedford came to town or, again, somebody from up in the Boston area. It's totally different atmosphere. And, you know, these kinds of games are great to start off the year, non-conference, just for fun. And in a way, Somerset's kind of the same thing. We've seen Durfee play Somerset you know, particularly for football, a number of years in a row. And, uh, you know, everybody wants to win it, but in the end of the game, in the end of the night, you know, everybody's shaking hands. Everybody knows each other. It's not like they're not familiar because a lot of these kids have been playing, you know, from across across both uh, towns, you know, Greater Fall River for years in different sports, you know, travel teams or whatnot. So it's not like, you know, you don't know the players on the other side. And especially here again with Diamond, Durfee, Conley. Good fan bases. Well, our 40 minutes here has run out, and right at the end of the regulation time. Got a player down on the field, so that's going to account for some more extra time here. It's like definitely cramping up there, getting off, off with his own power, but kind of limping a little bit. Back at it. Durfee with the free kick. Now again, I would suspect about two, two minutes or so here. of uh, some extra time, stoppage time. Centering pass in front on the ground and Cordero makes the play. That one going through the uprights on this side, out of play. Corner kick coming for the Bengals on the near side. Very little time remaining. Line drive toward the box, off the toes of two defenders, and back out. And the whistle sounds barely audible. <laughs> uh, that's it, the Hilltoppers win game one. They defeat their Fall River rivals, the Diamond Bengals. Here, I say week one, game one on opening night. A 3 nothing victory as the Bengals will drop to 0-1 to start the year. The Hilltoppers 1-0. Nice win and really a well-played game, like I said, from, from both sides. Um, you know, 
can't ask for much more on opening night, especially when, you know, everybody's still trying to gel and whatnot. Um, it, it's, you know, definitely a different situation. For Diamond, next up, they have two games next week. They will be home for both of them. Monday at 6, Westport coming in, another local team. And then on Wednesday, further down the road here, uh, down the Cape, Upper Cape Cod Tech, the Rams coming in to square off against the Bengals here at the Harrington Complex for Durfee Boys Soccer. Come on, load up. Here we go. All right. Um, Hilltoppers will be home for their next three games. They're playing at home on Saturday at 11 a.m. There you go, Saturday game. Uh, Titan Rehoboth coming in. And then next week on the 15th, they have Brockton. We will be there for that one. They also have Somerset Berkeley, another Saturday game. That's Saturday the 17th, 2 p.m. as Somerset will be coming across the Taunton River. So three straight home games for the Hilltoppers. Then they will go to Dartmouth. Um, our friends at DCTV have put that one on the calendar, and I'll be calling that one. So you'll have boys soccer from Durfee on the 15th next Thursday on Fred TV, and then the following week, the 20th, on Dartmouth Community Media with me at the call. Great first night here. Great to open the season. Thanks to Craig Salvador and Michael Vilasek, our camera crew tonight. I'm Evan Massard saying so long from Diamond. We'll see you tomorrow for week one of the high school football season. Good night.